learning how to take a flat, boring sky and turn it into a bright, beautiful one, like the image here, is actually extremely easy, using many different filters inside Perfect Effects. Let me go ahead and show you a couple of them. The first adjustment inside effects that we want to work with is something called the Adjustable Gradient Tool, which you can find on the right-hand side in your filter stack, right at the bottom. We're going to click once to apply it, and it will add a masking bug across our entire image. This will give us the ability to separate our sky from the rest of our landscape. If you have a slightly more difficult horizon line to work with, you can also choose to use our adjustment brush. The adjustable gradient works best on images like this one that have an extremely clear horizon line across the bottom. I'm going to click and drag this masking bug into place. And on the right hand side of my screen in the filter options pane, this is where we're going to make adjustments to the sky itself. You'll notice that it's automatically set to a preset called lighten, which means that it's lightening up the top part of our photo. Using any of the different sliders below, we can make other adjustments here. First, I want to take the brightness slider and move it over to the left. It's much too bright. If you want a deep, dark, very intense sky, you can move the brightness slider even further to the left-hand side. You can also take your contrast slider and move it over to the right to create deeper blacks and brighter whites in the same area. For enhancing clouds, you actually want to avoid the detail slider here. It will increase the grittiness in some of the smaller areas of the sky, including noise that may already exist in the image itself. We're going to leave the detail slider alone and apply another filter for that later. I can also go down and adjust the color. If you're going to make a very simple color-based adjustment, like cooling the sky down a little bit, you can just take the warmth slider and move it over to the left. You can also take the vibrant slider and push it to the right to intensify the colors. To add some detail and definition to the sky, we want to add something called the Dynamic Contrast Filter. In the Filter stack, I'm going to click the plus button, which will add an empty layer to my image, and then on the left-hand side of the screen, I'll open up Dynamic Contrast. These are all of the different filter presets I can add. I'm going to go up to the top and choose the one called Natural. On the right-hand side of the screen, in the Filter Options pane, I can make a couple of adjustments here. The detail section is what's going to give me the ability to apply edge contrast around the sides of my clouds. You want to be careful to avoid the small slider, again, so that you don't increase the grittiness on the smaller details. You want to mainly play around with the large and the medium sliders. By pushing them over to the right, we'll get a larger area of definition around the bigger clouds, and then by pushing the medium slider over to the right, we'll be hitting some of the medium-sized clouds to intensify the contrast. Down below, I can also adjust things like the whites and the blacks. By increasing both of these sliders, we'll push the white slider over a couple and the black slider over a couple of points as well. Again, we're increasing contrast. Our sky is much more visually pleasing than the flat one that we had started out with. The last filter that I want to show you how to use is the photo filter. Once again, in my filter stack, I'll click the plus button, jump over to the left-hand side of my screen, and we'll scroll down and open up Photo Filter. There are many different types of color-based filters that you can add to change the hue of the colors in your sky. I'm going to scroll down to a section right in the middle called the graduated filters. These separate your image down into multiple different sections so that I can choose to color the top of my sky and the bottom of my sky separately. There are many different ways to do that, but my favorite is called Graduated Warm Cool. I'll click once to apply it, and then on the right-hand side in my Filter Options pane, I need to adjust where my colors fall. You'll see that there are two colors, one that's orange and one that's blue. However, the orange is affecting the top of my sky and the blue the bottom. We want to switch them, so I'll click the Swap Colors button. Now we have a strong blue on the top, and then we have a nice orange on the bottom to bring out the sun setting. You can adjust the position as well as the transition between these two colors down at the bottom of the screen, underneath the position section. 
There's a presets drop down menu where you can actually choose a preset that you may prefer. There are many different options in here. Or you can choose to just manually adjust things like the distance. This will change how close it is to the top and the bottom just by clicking and dragging this. I can also take the transition slider and move it to the right to soften the edge between the top and the bottom. Once I have my position set, the last thing that I need to do is adjust the mode. This will change how these colors are blending into your background image. I'll open up the mode drop down menu and swap it over to strong. Strong is the most high contrast, high saturation option out of these four. And subtle is just the slightly more subtle version of strong. There's also an option called clean highlights as well as clean shadows. The best way to figure out which one works best for your image is just to hover your mouse over each option until you find the one that you think works best. I'm going to scroll up and choose Subtle. The last slider here that's extremely important is the polarizer. This is a good way to make sure that you maintain high contrast in the areas that you're applying the photo filter because sometimes they can appear a little flat after you add a layer of new color. So by taking the polarizer and moving it to the right, we're going to make sure that we increase the intensity of the contrast one last time to maintain not only the tones, but also our new colors. Now let's take a look at our before and our after. Our original image is extremely boring in the sky department. It was an absolutely beautiful day. However, the camera didn't capture the sky the way that I had wanted it. So we applied three different, very specific filters inside Perfect Effects, and we ended up with our after image. While you don't necessarily have to go quite as high saturation, high contrast as I did, you can see that the possibilities here are almost endless.